What's okay. what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode on the Incredible Podcast. We've got David Vega here. Um, I'm very excited for this, so uh, I appreciate you coming on, bro. No problem. How are you? I'm doing good. Good, good, good. Where where about you based? You based in Texas, isn't it? I'm in Austin, Texas. Austin, yeah. Texas. I bet it's hot, isn't it? Yeah, it's hot <laughs> out here. Yeah, we're in a drought also. You're in where? Oh, a drought. Yeah. Right oh. Yeah. Oh, mad. So, um, how how did you get? How long have you been tattooing for? How how did you get uh, into been, that? So I've been tattooing uh, going on seventeen years. Seventeen. Yeah, I first wow. started. Yeah, seventeen. I first started because I just wanted to be traditional. Uh, just kind of messing around, wanted to make some extra money. Yeah. Um, uh, while I was in school, so I went to Academy of Art University in San Francisco. And um, wanted to make some extra money and kind of went from it from there. Uh, started out trying to do traditional and just kind of ended up doing black and gray realism a wow. few years into it. Yeah, wicked. So was you doing color as well in the traditional kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah I was doing a lot of color. Walk-ins, color, anything I could, I could tattoo I was doing. Oh, awesome, man. So how long was you doing that for? Was you doing that for like a couple of years or...? Um, uh, traditional. Yeah, yeah. I would say the first five years. First five years. Yeah, first five years is pretty much like traditional. All all kinds of work, not just traditional. But I kind of um, started because I wanted to do traditional. Yeah, yeah. Um, I suppose I suppose when you start doing traditional stuff like that, I suppose like when you first start, I think you get your sort of basic skills down first, don't you? Like you get your like. Right color pack in you get your like sort of whip shading out and stuff your your line work down really well so, and because because when i first started i started doing um uh, i suppose i started doing dot work so um the first year i was doing like dot work stuff and dot work really helped me one with lining <clears throat> and finding like the depth of like my needle in in the skin do you know what i mean mm. um, yeah i think for me traditional was a good basis for a lot of tattooing Using mm. coils, the inconsistency of uh, having uh, good and bad days with coils, it helps appreciate, uh, helps me appreciate, you know, what we have now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. What I saw, what coils were you using? Oh man, um, it's a long while ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been a while, man. I had some Mickey sharps. Um, Mickey sharps, yeah. Um, I just I had a bunch of them. I had some real cheap ones, like off. Oh, just that got online also nothing yeah nothing yeah, crazy yeah. yeah yeah i think when when i first got because i first got, um when i first started i got given a a really cheap coil machine and i found it super hard to use super hard because there's yeah. so many different things because i think with coil machines you have to like set them up right don't you right in terms of yeah. like lining and them. shading they have to be tuned right and you know some days you just have good and bad days especially with the different types of skins you know yeah 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 wow that's cool man that's really cool so so when you started going into black and gray what w did you use coil machines then uh, or did you did you switch to yeah, rotaries I've, I've been using coils up until maybe i would say seven seven years ago seven years really so you was doing that yeah. for a good for, yeah for a good 10 10 10 years or i suppose wouldn't you yeah yeah mm -hmm. wicked so so were you so what was the transition like from coils to to rot to rotary was it was it much of a difference uh at first i didn't like the rotaries you didn't um no at first i didn't it was uh i i, I like the give of a coil machine yeah uh, i like the feel of a coil machine yeah um uh after i think about three tattoos with a rotary uh i started getting the hang of it and mm -hmm. i started to uh, be able to really appreciate what they what they can provide um they're very consistent i never had good or bad days with the machine it was always you know just uh they pretty much did what they needed to do yeah so what was the um what was the first brand of rotary you used was it bishop the, no the first brand i used it was a uh, cheyenne cheyenne is it I, the cheyenne i think was a pin yeah and then from there um I met uh, James and Franco for Bishop, and they 
let me use um i think the phantom yeah i used the phantom and they were just in the process of making the um the bishop wand yeah yeah and i fell in love with that machine yeah wow yeah because i i know i know you're signed by them right you're sponsored right yes yeah um so what I'm I'm going to go straight into the to the techniques because I'm super gassed that you're on here, and I think a lot of people yeah. that watch watch my my channel as well is is uh, are very excited that you're on um, because you've got a you've got a technique that I've only ever seen you you um, you do. So can you explain a bit about what you because I've because from what can I try and guess? So I try and guess your your technique. So I I like to study. I, I watch a lot of your live streams on Instagram as well. So what I think you do is you kind of like use the drag. You 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 like drag the machine back instead of going like pushing forward. If you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And I think that you just kind of layer it up slowly as you you pull back. But yeah, yeah so yeah, there's a there's a few different ways that I kind of work. I'm, yeah. I'm actually surprised a lot of tattooers haven't caught on to it. Um, and I'll kind of explain, uh, that is one aspect. And um, mm. the hand movement, if you notice, my hand movement is a lot slower than some artists. Yeah. And the reason for that is the needles create dots and lines as you drag. Yeah. Um, so I let the machine do uh, everything it needs to do. The, the yeah. slower I drag the hand, the more needles and the softer it'll be. Yeah, and then yeah. I'll cross hatch at the same time. Um, but yeah, I, I will uh, drag the needle back toward me mm -hmm. when I'm building up layers of really light, soft layers. I'll yeah. drag it toward me. Um, when I'm building up medium to dark layers, I'll do the pendulum. So I'll go back. Right, I see. So it's... what you, what's really hard to see is I do cross hatch a lot. You'll see it in my close ups, but um, you, it's hard to see in the live. But my cross hatching is very subtle. I'm not cross hatching like at 90 degrees. It's just kind of, um, you know, it's this way. And then I'll slowly turn the machine just one way. So it's just slowly cross hatching. Uh, so I'm not creating any of those um, uh, mag lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I suppose when, when you've got a, um, when you slow your hand speed down as well, you don't tend to get the mag lines either, do you? When you slow your hand speed. Right, right. You, you will get some, but as long as you cross hatch, they start to go away. And then when it heals, it goes away anyways. Yeah. 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 Um, so what, so you use the, you use the, uh, the one packer, don't you? I use both. I use the one packer and the shader. Um, it depends on if I'm changing up my style. Um, if I'm trying to tattoo a little darker or lighter or trying to just figure something out right yeah. now, I'm using the shader for the most part. Are you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so there's, there's a, so I, I was going to ask, do you use the shader for lighter, lighter tones or do you kind of just switch between the two when you fancy? Um, so I kind of switch up my style of tattooing, whether, um, pretty much if I'm going to tattoo faster, uh, faster hand movements, I'll do the packer. Um, okay. if I'm using the shader, uh, um, uh, then I'm doing slower hand, hand movements. Um, so I'm trying to kind of, I took a, a pretty long break last year, so now I'm trying to get back into uh, building up my patience again. So I'm yeah. using the shader so that I can make these tattoos. Uh, uh, I'm tattooing slower now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than yeah. I was a few months back. Yeah. See that. See that's what I struggle with. I think. I, th I think as I'm tattooing, I depending on what machine I use as well. Yeah. I I, I suppose I'm in the same boat as you. Um, I just I just feel myself going faster and then then my work doesn't seem as smooth but you've got super super smooth work but do you mm -hmm. so so what what voltage do you use on the shader and what voltage do you use on the packer shader it's nine volts uh, um, packer it's uh, I think around seven volts seven and I suppose yeah. because the packer hits harder doesn't it you have to lower the, the volts packer to... hits, yeah right yeah I can probably run the packer at eight to eight to uh eight point five volts but uh i would have to kind of move along pretty quick yeah 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 that makes sense because of trauma to the skin um yeah that well that answered a, a massive question for me because i didn't know what what voltage you used on the shader and i i used the shader today um today to to be to be fair and i was using it at nine volts and it, it's super smooth like you 
it's just it's it's a really good machine the wand is a very 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 yeah. special machine um yeah. what needle sizes do you use do you use like curve oh. mags I use curve mags for almost everything. Uh, I don't think I've used a straight mag in a while. No yeah. round shaders. Um, so pretty much for all my tattoos, I have three needles I always use. It's just a three liner, uh, seven curve bug pin, and 13 curve bug pin. Is that uh, uh, hardly ever? You hardly ever use what, sorry? I hardly ever go any higher than that. Sometimes I'll bust out a 23 if it's a larger piece or something. Yeah, yeah. So do you, um, so on, on the liner, is it just a standard gauge? Is that a 0 0.35? It's just a standard three, three round liner. A standard, yeah. 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 And then, and the, if, if I need something smaller, then I'll, I'll use a, a bug pin or something. But for the three, I pretty much just need standard because I'm not really lining anything. I use it just to kind of get some corners that I can't get with the curved mag. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much what I use. I never, I'm not ever really lining with my liner. Uh, if I do line, it's going to be with my mags. Okay, yeah. So how how would you line with? So so sorry. Just just to to clarify, the bug pins are like zero point three zeros, aren't they? They're the ten the ten right. gauge so, ones. Yeah, yeah. I think they even have some smaller. Do they? Do you do you use the 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 ten gauge or do you use the smaller ones? Which uh, are like zero point two five. Ten's good. Yeah. So I don't ever need anything. So when when you're lining with a mag, you just turn it to the side and just feather it in so right i um it's kind of hard to explain what if i'm not doing it yeah, yeah i'm not kind of um lining it like this i don't uh want to kind of um tear the skin mm -hmm. uh, i feel like if you do it too much with a mag you can tear the skin but yeah. what i do is i kind of have it this way and i kind of bounce the uh, machine like this yeah and you get a soft edge uh, i see i don't want any hard edges yeah 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 if yeah. I do need a really, really hard edge, then I'll kind of just almost pack it in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's super interested as well. What ink do you use? Because I, I think I messaged you a while back, uh, a while back and you said you used the your gray gray wash set from um uh, Empire Inks. Empire. Yeah. Yep, that's the one I use. Do you yeah. use which black do you use? Uh I always use the ivory and the classic. Um I even tried some uh Pantera black also. Uh, oh, also, okay. big sleep black is really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you do you do you use any other techniques other than um, the pendulum and and the 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 other one, the, the 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 drag back? Do you use any like stippling or anything like that? Uh, uh there's probably too many to list, but yeah, there's a lot of techniques I use. But for the most part, it's going to be the pendulum and the uh, dragging the needle back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, cool. that's going to be pretty much 90% of the tattoo. But there's some techniques that I use, like with a liner, um, a smaller mag to kind of, and like I showed you when I, I uh, line with the mag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, so you teach people, right? You you do one-on-one -on -one se se seminars, right? Is that... Yeah, I've been doing some one-on-one -on -one seminars this year. Yeah, yeah. Are, are, are they Those expensive? or? Um, I mean, for some people, maybe. For some people, they're priceless. It just depends on well, how, I mean, it's... how you know yeah, how yeah. much you're willing to learn yeah of course but yeah yeah they're, they're not cheap yeah so um how how long does that last though like talk me through a a seminar like a, j just like the the, the so rough... we have um uh, sure so we have three different tiers of seminars um uh, because people like to learn different ways yeah uh the first one is they can just come in um pretty much like a a, a group seminar would be i tattoo they watch me and um they just ask questions. Um, I'll explain what I'm doing. That's the first one. Yeah. Second one is they come in and we both work on practice skin. Um, I kind of show them my techniques and I let them do the techniques also. Um, just run them through my process that way also. And then the third one, they actually bring in their own client and it's almost like a semi collab where we kind of work on the client together. Oh, okay. That's cool. So, do, so, so you tattoo the client as well as, as your. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. How do yeah. you design your like tattoos? How where do you get your references from? Do you So right now I'm doing a lot of portraits and memorial portraits. So all my references are just gonna come straight from the client. Um but when I'm doing designs, it it's they're all over the place. I mean, they can be just something I find on Google. Um uh, I can capture photos from just books that I have and stuff, but 
yeah, there anything that I can find a good photo of, I'll use it. Yeah. It's hard to find good references now because every everything's pretty much used up. Yeah, I found that as well. I, I mean, I get mo most of my my references from Pinterest. I f I feel like there's there's a lot of yeah. people that that still upload to that to that site. So they right. <clears throat> it, yeah, it's it's just su it's just super nice. But when you look for a particular reference, say like your port portrait references or so or something like that, what do you tend to look for? Do you tend to look for the contrast or? Uh, lighting is the most important thing for me. Yeah. So I've had people send me really blurry photos, but the lighting is really good. So I can kind of clean it up um, as I tattoo, sharpen some stuff up. I don't like to kind of change the image too much. I like to keep it as natural as it is to the photo. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the lighting is the most important thing. Yeah, um, yeah. So one, one to two light sources is the best. Uh, anything higher, you start getting things washed out. Okay, I know yeah. a lot of the uh, newer photos that professional photos taken are uh, really washed out because it's more about like color and filtering, you know, uh, filtering things out and stuff. But the yeah. older photos are perfect. Yeah. How uh, talk yeah. talk talk me through like your 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 day? Like, how do you prepare yourself for for tattooing? Because so, like I I, I kind of have to have like a ritual. Like I still like I have to get up at a certain time get a coffee and then like, do you do your like design work the night before or do you do it on the day? Uh, usually I do it a day or two before. Um, I like to have the least interference before the tattoo as possible. I'm the same. I, I get up, have coffee, uh, watch TV, listen to music, relax. Um, uh, I think as artists, we kind of have to have be uh, cleared in our, in our minds before yeah. we work hours at a time, you know, cause these tattoos take a lot out of us. Yeah. Uh, and I'm working with, uh, around nine to ten hours a day really so at the end of the day you know you're pretty much drained um and if you're drained before you even go into the session then it's going to be worse yeah so it's always good to have some kind of ritual to clear your mind relax your body you yeah know. get good sleep the night before yeah definitely yeah yeah ha, ha, what what do you do for 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 your like any hobbies do you do you have any hobbies out of tattooing um, because I find like I need to when I've tattooed I feel like because tattooing when I was learning to tattoo it was a it was almost like a hobby um other than my my job so I found because this is now my full-time job I've had to find another hobby to try and relax relax from tattooing which is really weird but do you do you do anything in your spare time uh I collect um uh like memorabilia Horror, oh, horror memorabilia you can kind of see it behind me yeah yeah, yeah. a few things there um that's pretty much what i do um but yeah before before tattooing it was the same like tattooing was probably the hardest medium to get into um because i used to paint uh charcoal draw i used to do everything and getting into tattooing was so difficult that it was just something that i really wanted to master um now after tattooing for so many years i feel like uh I tried to draw again um, a couple of weeks ago, and it felt so difficult to draw now. Uh, yeah, the tattooing. It's yeah, such a different I found that. Uh, process. Yeah, literally, I I, I found that um, I could draw in school, and then as soon as I started tattooing, it's it's completely different from paper. Yeah, I know yeah. you tattoo fake skin as well. Because uh, during lockdown, was it in lockdown yeah. that you tattooed that? Oh, what's her name? Yeah. Um, Chade. Yes. Yes. So how yes. how, how, how do you find that? How, what was the question? How, how, how do you find tattooing fake skin other than? It's, uh, it's not the same. Uh, it's fun. Uh, it kind of, you know, during lockdown, I had to do something because once you're not tattooing for a while, you just get that itch and you just, you know, you'll go crazy if you don't. Yeah. I don't know what it is about tattooing, but it really does that to you. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, there's some similarities, you know, but it's, it's, you have to do a lot more layers. You have to really build it up. Um, it, it's kind of, it, it can be very frustrating, but uh, it's, it's fun also. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's nice to hang it up in in the house or whatever, or give it away, or yeah. I don't know. Like it's, that's it's, what I do. I just, I'll give them away. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Do you do you give them away to like just friends or do you sell them? 
Uh, well, I gave one to Franco uh, Viscovi, uh, the one I did to Jack Rudy. Uh, the Sade, I think I I gave it away on Instagram. Um, oh, and the others, I just kind of give to friends at the shop or something. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. that, mate. When when I saw that as well, I was like, man, like, ugh, it's so smooth. Like, I I tattoo fake skin as well, and it, I, I can never get it just perfect the way you did in that how long did that take you was it a long time oh it was definitely longer than a touch like an actual tattoo on skin um mm. uh, i think i did that in the course of four or five days really? I, think I worked maybe four or five hours at, at, at a time yeah so it could have been maybe 15 to 20 hours wow yeah wow yeah. wow so how long do you normally tattoo for T eight eight to ten hours a day is it Eight to ten hours. Do you yeah. do any conventions, like tattoo conventions? I used to. I used to. I haven't done them in a while, uh, but I think I might start uh, doing a few conventions again uh, after this year. Yeah. Who do you look up yeah. to in the industry? Like, what's your um, what's your like inspiration? Do you do you have many? I have a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> to, um, to... I'll kind of I'll, I'll kind of run you through the. Uh, the timeline of my inspiration. So the yeah, first on. one actually was um, Mr. Cartoon. Yeah. Um, so he he was uh, the first one that I really uh, saw that I really wanted to, you know, made me want to tattoo. Have you seen? Uh, um, that, I, have you seen his Netflix documentary? Yeah, so I sick. did. I actually got invited to the uh, the premiere of it. Wow. Uh, he invited me to the premiere, but it was going to be here in Austin at South by Southwest. Wow. And then COVID hit, so they canceled ah, it. So nice. I just came go. Yeah. yeah. Mad. Yeah, sorry, go on. But yeah. Um, okay, uh, so yeah, the, once I started getting into tattooing, once I started tattooing, then I really started seeing like the magazines and who was really out there. So, you know, guys like um, uh, Franco, um, uh, Bob Tyrell, um, Jack Rudy, all these guys, like I just saw what was possible. Yeah. And that's pretty much what got me into portrait work was uh, when I started seeing like Bob Tyrell's work and Franco Viscovi's work. Yeah. Uh, and then Nico Hurtado, of course. Um, yeah. And then later on, like, I think my favorite right now is probably Ralph Nonweiler. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm he's, trying to get him yeah, on the podcast really as changed. well. But he's super hard to get hold of. He's super busy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Super busy. Yeah, he, he pretty much changed how I tattoo once I started seeing his stuff. Yeah. What, like, with the, the small hand movements and stuff? I uh, no, because I never really saw the process before. But uh, just with what was possible, uh, I think as artists, we kind of uh, uh, if we if we don't kind of push the boundaries, we try to stay with what's possible or what we see. What's your what do you tell your client to do uh, when you've tattooed them? Do you, do you like what's your like healing process? Do you just tell them to? I feel like everybody's different. Yeah. Uh, See, I, so I, uh, I let them dry them out. I let it dry out for a couple of days before. Yeah. I think skin's going to heal itself. Um, it's always nice to put maybe a little bit of lubricant, uh, like, um, aquaphor or something, uh, or even the inkies, uh, just a real light coat, but some clients would tend to put too much, uh, cause they think it's going to help it, uh, through and it actually does the opposite. Uh, yeah, just keep it off the sun, no swimming. Uh, try not to touch it or rub it on anything. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just leave it alone as much as possible and kind of let it air out. Air out, yeah. Yeah, see, my, my healing process is um, after I've tattooed it, I'll wrap it up and then I'll just tell, tell them to give it a warm, soapy wash. Do you, do, you, do you tell them to wash it with soap as well? Uh, yeah, uh, wash it with the dial soap. Yeah. And then um, let it air out for a couple of days and then, yeah, dry out for a couple of days and then um, put some like thin layer of maybe once or twice a day of like cocoa butter or something like that. Just something. Yeah, cocoa butter is good. Yeah. So when you tattoo, you don't use green soap? You just use... I don't use green soap. Yeah, I, I use green soap toward the end when I just really want to clean everything off. Yeah. But I'm only using distilled water, uh, damp paper towel with distilled water, wow. always lubricating the skin. Um, Do and you I use really inkies? don't stretch much either when I'm tattooing. Uh, I'm not stretching the skin out too much. Ah. Uh, I'm just kind of holding the skin in place so it's not moving around. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I feel like the more you stretch, the more trauma you're causing and the redder it gets. 
Uh, it's similar, like if you had, you, you know, you could put your arm out and just start you know, poking at it and stretching it, and it's going to be red. Red. It's yeah. the same thing with a tattoo. Yeah. Wow. That's that's very good to know. I'm going to actually try that next on my tattoo, which is tomorrow. Um, yeah. Do you use inkies? Do you use any like ointment while you're? Yes, tattooing? I use the purple glide. Purple inkies. glide. Purple glide. Awesome. Yeah. Right, I'm going to try and get some questions from everybody. Yeah. See what they want to know. Have you tried any more? Um, have you tried any more machines other than the Bishop? Do you, do you, is that all you use now? It's all I use now. Is it? Uh, yeah. I'm I'm kind of the person if if it's not broken, don't fix it. If it works fine for me, if I get a good result, there's really no need. Um, and they've been extremely consistent. I hadn't had one problem with them, um, so I just stick with it. Yeah. See. See when. My my bishop wand has a, like a little rattle in it, in my shader. Mm -hmm. It's super annoying, but it works okay. fine. But it's just like quite loud. Yeah. But um, do you do, how how do you service your your bishop? Do you do you like lube it up and stuff? Uh, every couple of months, I will put a little yeah. bit uh, a lube in there. But that's it. Yeah. yeah. Do you what um do you use the do you use a power pack to to or no you use the the B charge don't you? Uh, uh, actually, now I'm using the power wand. Oh, are you? Yeah. Uh, is that a difference between power? It's the weight. So the it's consi it's just as consistent. The voltage is great. Everything's great. Uh, yeah. The only difference is the way it feels. It, it does feel sturdier. The only thing with uh, the original wand and the power pack, you had that gap between um, that didn't feel sturdy. Yeah. Um, so now with the power wand, that's been fixed, and it's just like one solid machine. Oh, wow. And I'll, I'll run the machine like at nine volts uh, for nine hours. And at the end of it, I'm, I still have like 60 to 70% uh, power. Really? Yeah. That's very interesting. I think it's it's different with the packer and the liner. They run, um, they use up more uh, power. Yeah. But the shader, it will last for a while. Do you ever use the, um, the wand liner? Have you even got a wand liner? No. You haven't got the one liner. No, I don't think I, with my style, I, I don't think uh, it would work. It's I do layers even when I'm I'm packing black. It's layers, um, so I, I I don't ever feel the need to <laughs> yeah yeah to rip somebody's skin up with a liner. Yeah, right. We've got a question. I think we've already kind of asked asked it, but um, this is from underscore d dot tattoo artist. Best advice for starting artist in this industry. Um, and it, it's hard because everybody has a different route Every, everybody has a different uh, direction they're trying to take their career so it really depends on what you're trying to do uh, if you want to be a rock star tattooer then and it's uh, I, I wouldn't advise uh, going any further but if you really want to grow yourself and, and be a great artist then it, there, you have to put in a lot of work mm -hmm. That's hours and hours of work you're going to tear your back up um, do you, do you find um do you find that you have to look after your your neck and your back and stuff cuz I ache all the time. I get like headaches after a... So yeah, in the past 2 years I think I've been feeling it the most. Um mm. I haven't been to a chiropractor, um doctor nothing, uh but I feel like maybe it's it's about time that I kind of start taking care of my back. Yeah. How old are you now if you yeah. don't mind me asking? Uh 39. 39 i'm catching up i'm catching up yeah. <laughs> i'm in my thir my 30s now so okay yeah do you ever use color you don't uh, use color like no. do you use like so opaque I, grays or anything? i used to i used to do a lot of color i used to do nothing but color um uh now i think i might uh, i know i tell everybody uh no color at all but i think i might switch it up and start adding just a, a little bit of color a splash uh, i did one piece um a couple of months ago with an elephant holding a crayon it was a memorial for the guy's son oh, and cool. he was holding a blue crayon and i did the, the crayon in color oh wicked yeah that's i think i saw yeah. that actually did you post that yeah yeah i think I did. I did see that yeah so you've never used opaque grays or anything like that i've, I've tried empire's whitewash before um, yeah i'm just uh uh, I think a little old school when it comes to black and gray. I love the black and gray look of traditional black and gray. Yeah. Um, 
I can get it to uh, look semi opaque, and that's because I'm doing um, I'm building up my lights and extra lights, and so it's they're so saturated into the skin that it'll give it that look. So I get that a lot. Uh, people think I use like the opaque grays. Yeah, uh, but no, it's just if you fully saturate. Uh, the lights and extra lights, it'll give it that opaque look, especially if you put it like right next to solid black. Yeah. Do you have any advice for, for, for doing that, for like full saturation? Because I, I, I find the way I do it is nor is normally I would get the right size needle first and then I'd be super consistent with my hand. Every single stroke that I put into the skin, I'll, I'll make sure it's the same speed and just gradually come down and move and move my hand over the area that I'm saturating. How how do you do it? Um, it's it's pretty much the same. It's pretty mm. straightforward. It's just a lot of cross hatching. Um, I think that's one thing people don't see is is it's really difficult uh, and it takes a lot of time that um, I'm cross hatching, but it's extreme. Uh, consistent cross hatching. I have to make sure every stroke matters. Uh, every stroke is going to be exactly the same. Yeah. Um, it's like when you see a, a painting. Um, I'm trying to reduce as much of the paint strokes as possible, uh, but you'll still you'll still see the direction I went. Yeah. Uh, when you look close up. Yeah. Um, have you got your phone on you, or, or are you using your phone to? Uh, no, I, I'm using my iPad. Are you? Have you got your phone on you? I do. Can you go on to your Instagram? I'm gonna go. Sure. I'm. I'm gonna try something new. I'm gonna go and try. I wanna. I'll, I'll, I want you to find a a picture um, on your Instagram of a tattoo. It's. Um, I should know this. I can't believe I don't know it. It's a gangster. What's his name? It's on the screen in front of me. Mm. Hold on. Let me find. Oh, it. that's. Uh, I know which one you're talking about. Um, oh, what's his name? This is a really cool thing, actually. It's da it's quite far down, I think. Is it? Oh, there he is. Al There's the Al Capone. Al yeah, that's him. It's this one here. Oh, it's oh, that's uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Don Corleone. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, Godfather. Can you um, can you just go through the tattoo and and t and tell us what um needle you used? Can you remember? Um, for the the Godfather one, right? Yeah, this one. Not the one below it. That one. Okay. Yeah. yeah so that was pretty much with the amount of wrinkles uh, in his face. I, I would say uh, eighty percent was uh, seven mag. Seven mag. Seven mag. I think thirteen mag. I used for um, some of the background. Yeah. Um, and then like I'll kind of once I get some details, I kind of go back and layer another layer of uh, uh, light or extra light. And I will use the 13 mag for that. Yeah. But yeah. for the most part, I think it was all seven mag. Like I, uh, wow. I'll use the seven mag for about 80 percent of all my tattoos. Wow. What you, like, even on e even on the large like cheek areas where it's super light, super softly saturated, you just go, go yeah. through with a seven mag. Wow, I have a I have a lot of uh, control with the seven mag. Uh, I will bring out a larger one uh, if I feel um, you need to blend it a bit. I feel more. like the, the thirteen kind of causes less trauma. Yeah, uh, le uh, less redness. But for I think for him, he didn't get really red on on his upper leg, and I yeah. think it was a, yeah, pretty much seven mag for the entire thing. Wow, with the exception with a few spots. I mean, I used the. Uh, I think uh, the three liner for some of the small, small details in the nose and mouth. So how do you how do you tattoo the eyes then? Do you do you do it all with a seven mag as well? Wow, yeah, all the seven mag. Wow. Yeah. So as you're going round like the eye, as it's curving round, you sort of twist your machine round in your fingers so it doesn't obviously put in like right. a, a a line, like a, a a thicker line. Right. Wow. Right. Uh, yeah, the reason I use the seven mag for all the uh, as much detail as I can is once you start using the liner, you get too sharp of a look, yeah, um, and it's not consistent with the rest of the tattoo. Yeah. So if you have sharp, like sharp lines around the eyes and and mouth and nose, it's not going to look consistent, uh, and it's going to throw uh, uh throw your your uh, the way it looks off. Yeah. So I try to use the the mag as much as possible, um, except for the areas that I just can't use it. 
Yeah, yeah. So do you change your vaults throughout your tattoo or, or just keep it the same? It's nine vaults. I'll, I'll change the, the uh, movements and uh, speed of my hand. Yeah, wow. I think that's probably the best way as well to do it. I think keep your vaults the same because a lot of people ask me questions. Um, they like, do you change your vaults th throughout your ta your tattoos? And I don't. I, I literally keep the same vault. I just change my hand. That's very, very good to know though. So the wrinkles yeah, at, in the forehead. At the, at, the at, at the beginning of a tattoo, uh, I decide whether I'm going to go 8.5 or 9 volts. Uh, and that's when I'll switch up my voltage. Yeah. Uh, but after I've kind of uh, kind of figured out the skin and what it can handle. That's yeah. when I keep, keep the voltage and just go. With so that. yeah, your voltage will de um, will 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 depend on how good the client's skin is, right? If you go for eight point five or nine, yes. okay, that's yeah. Right. Even with, I, I know this is a different. Um, as a fly, I just went <laughs> past my face. <laughs> Even though this is a different one, so the one underneath, which is this one, this nose bit here like the shadow you did that with a mag as well yeah i think it's right right next to it this is um al capone so yeah um is that right i haven't seen the godfather that's bad i'm gonna see it? if i can show you something yeah go on i haven't seen the godfather the film i need to see it okay so hold on, hold on. sick can you see that yep so all all in here was yeah. a mag, yeah, and then right in here was a liner. Was a liner. Yeah. So I'll try to get all this with a mag, but sometimes that curvature, um, it's just too much for the mag. Um, I don't want to get any fray frayed lines popping out on the side of it. I want it to be really sharp. So if there's a sharp shadow, some uh, similar to that one, yeah, then I'll keep. Um, I'll, I'll use a liner. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you, so you, 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 you use mags as much as you can through the tattoo because it keeps it soft. I try to use the mag the entire time if I can. Like if I don't, I'll put the liner out. If I don't have to use it, I won't use it. Yeah, um, wow. but I'm also I'm not lining. I'm not pulling the line. I'm kind of like a, I'm doing the same movements with the a liner that I'm doing uh, with the mag. So every time I do a line, I'm going like this with it. I'm wow. not like pulling a line or, or pushing it. You're just kind of like fe feathering it in, small right. small bit at a time. See right. if there's any more questions. Yeah. Oh, now they're coming in. Um, <laughs> so Adam Richmond says he asks worst things people can do or say while being tattooed. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. The list goes on on that one, man. There's so many things people can say. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I think the craziest thing someone said, oh, I don't know, really. It's hard to say. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to think. I think, what's the craziest place you've, you've, you've ever tattooed? I've ever never accepted in, any crazy places. Any crazy, just like always, arms, legs? No, I've always been just very straightforward. Um, I just want to do a really good tattoo. I don't want to do it for the shock value or do it yeah. just because it's a crazy tattoo. Yeah, very, very good. Very good. What's, um, okay, here we go. Uh, craziest thing someone has requested. I suppose you wouldn't take on anything bad anyway, would you? Are you, are you, are you quite selective with what you, what you tattoo? Yeah, I think I turned down maybe... 50 60% of what I what really? I get requested. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's so, sick. So though. sometimes it, it it's just because the photo is not good enough. Yeah. Uh, I I just don't think I would do it justice or you, you know they they want certain things that I just don't feel or within what I I do. Yeah. And sometimes this is not something I think will be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What um, I I I can't believe I haven't asked this yet. But what? Uh, uh, so that was from Saskia underscore Air, which is my sister. <laughs> um, no. Nikki Brown uh, asks, what type of cartridges do you use? So I use Quadrin, uh, Da Vinci, and uh, Shining. Okay. Uh, so I use like a, a qu the Quadrin liners. I love. Uh, I use uh, Quadrin liners. Uh, I prefer them to the chains. To be fair. 
What's that? I prefer the quadrant liners to the Cheyenne liners because I feel like the quadrant liners are just more bit. They they don't rattle around in the cartridge as much as the. Yeah, Cheyennes I never do. use the uh, the Cheyenne liners. I'm, I'm not too fond of them, but yeah, the quadrants are, are perfect. Um, and I use a quadrant seven, uh, Da Vinci seven, and Da Vinci thirteen. Awesome. Um, what's so you you own your own sh- uh, tattoo studio, right? Is is it just you working yes. in there? It's uh, uh, me and Trent. Trent, and we have a, a yeah. Do you have you got an apprentice or? No, I, I don't think I, I will. Why? Why is that? It's just, a, just well, it's a big responsibility, and you know, I have kids at home, so it's like yeah. I, don't, I don't need an, another kid at the <laughs> shop. Yeah, yeah, fair, <laughs> fair one. I mean, I, I I see the benefits to it. Um, you know, they can help break down and all this stuff, uh, but it's a big responsibility. Um, I think maybe one day I will. Um, yeah. But right now, that's I think that's why I'm doing the seminars. It's kind of a, it's it, not it, really an apprenticeship, but you know, I get to, to meet uh, new artists uh, from all levels. You know, from tattooing from two years to thirty years, and it's it's cool doing it that way. Yeah. How much are your seminars? Can I ask? You don't. You don't. Have to. Uh, so. No, that's fine. Yeah, it, it's all it's all pretty much open when you. Uh, so it's a thousand, uh, two, and then three. So yeah, so it's uh, a tier thousand. one is a thousand, tier two is is two, and tier uh, three is three. Three, yeah. I might have to take the three. I might, I might have yeah. to come over and take well, whatever the, uh, you want, man. Take take Absolutely. the three, and just watch it. <laughs> watch you do your thing, and we can do. I suppose it's like a collab, isn't it? I suppose it's yeah. Like, so if you, yeah, if you want to do just a full on collab, we can do that also. Oh yeah, yeah thing. for sure, hundred percent. I'll fly over. I, I've, I've I've never been to Texas. I really, really, really want to go. Yeah, it's country no, music, isn't it? Is that right? Country music. What's it? Is that country uh, music? Actually, you'll be surprised when you come to Austin. It's it's a uh, very liberal. Is it? It's yeah. It's the most liberal city in in Texas. Wow. Yeah, very hipster. Is it? Yeah. Says so like, like a, a lot of rap it's, and it's stuff. A, it's a it's a small city trying to be a big city. So. Ah. Uh. Yeah interesting very interesting yeah i mean yeah. whenever you're free dude i'll 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 give yeah. you a message and we'll definitely collab that'd be sick oh, so, sure. mate that'd be that would blow my mind definitely yeah. um definitely yeah. let's have a look which black uh <clears throat> okay so theo underscore kj j i think we've already addressed this but which black and gray colors is he using and which needles so empire. yeah empire yeah, so empire gray wash set um uh, sometimes i use a pantera black sometimes i use the empire classic black and uh, big sleeps black um, yeah but yeah it's always the empire for my washes and um that cheyenne uh cartridges uh da vinci and quadrant yeah this is a good one uh jamie eager three says any tips or techniques on hair, short fur, or long beard hair? Oh, yeah. So oh, I can go into a whole thing about hair. It's um, especially beards because uh, you'll see a lot of beards out there that kind of look like ramen noodles. <laughs> um, so I think uh, when I do the seminars, the first thing I tell everybody is uh, you gotta, you can't think of a portrait or you can't think of a photo as the photo itself. So don't think of it as hair. Don't think of it as a nose. Don't think of it as a mouth. Everything I do, I break it down into shapes. Everything is, is shapes. Um, and if, as long as I, uh, stencil the shape that I see in in that tone, when I go to tattoo it, I have, I fill in that shape according to what it looks like on, in the photo. Um, and I'm not thinking about it as being hair. I'm not thinking about it as being, uh, an eye or a mouth or anything. It's all basic shapes that I break down because that's pretty much what photos are anyway. They're all basic shapes. Yeah. Uh, and then eventually they start to form what they're supposed to look like. Yeah. But hair, I treat it just like the rest of the face. It's just basic shapes. Um, of course, once I'm done with uh, that area, I'll go back and add some strands of hair if I feel like I need to. I can always go in and refine it, but yeah. I don't treat it as hair. Yeah. So how, you, how do you like do you twist because the way i do hair i kind of like twist my needle like this and start like penduluming pendulum swinging the the needle in at, uh instead of like obviously doing this way i do it this way to create the the mm-hmm. strands is that how you do it yeah that, that's that's a good way so i try to kind of fill in 
like the basic shape first. Yeah. And then I'll start adding those strands of hair if I need to. But it's always different too. Like if you're doing curly hair, then you can't really do that so much. That's why I say like it's all shapes to me. Um, yeah. A good way to do it is uh, stencil your – do your stencils upside down. Um, and they help you break it down. Um, or just look at your photo upside down every once in a while just to kind of see – the basic shapes and tones that are there instead of focusing on like uh, actual hair strands or, or details like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, that's, yeah. So when you was to go back into, say, if you did the basic shapes and stuff, would you, well, I suppose it, I suppose it depends on the reference, isn't it? Like if you used to go into and to define it, you wouldn't use a liner, you would just use, I don't know, the side of a mag, I suppose, wouldn't you, to like, to get that sharper look? Um, yeah, so sometimes I use the liner to get the sharper look, but do I try you, yeah. to stay with the mag. Yeah, um, Jamie Ego Three also says how to grow your client base. That, that I think that's a good question to um, to end on. To be fair, oh, um, there's a lot of ways with that too. I think consistency is the biggest thing in tattooing right now. Yeah, uh, if you can be consistent, then eventually they'll catch on. Um, uh, so once you start doing good tattoos. Every tattoo you, you have uh, do from that point on has to be as good, if not better. Uh, if you start roller coastering, going up and down, uh, people start to lose interest or they start to uh, question whether you're going to be the good or bad day when they show up. Um, yeah. So consistency is probably the biggest thing. Yeah. And treating your clients right. You treat your clients right, they go and tell somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose like the more people you tattoo as well, the more walking advertisement you'll have. You know, you, exactly. you just have like a billboard walking around with good tattoos on and then they'll ask where they got it from and then it's just a word of mouth, isn't it? Um, yep. Okay, actually, there's a couple more coming in. They keep coming in. No problem. Um, yeah, how do you get your... I think we've kind of... Well, I suppose we've touched on this in in the uh, in the episode, but how do you get your shading so smooth? What techniques do you use? I think it's, it's the crosshatch one, isn't it? It's a crosshatching and... Um so the, I guess there's there's a few other things also. Um, when you run that you run the machine, you always want to uh, you want to do soft shading. You got have to run it uh, very perpendicular to the skin. If you kind of twist it just a little bit, it's going to create more lines because these needles start to hit more uh, uh, than the ones in the back. But yeah. If you stay consistent and, and perpendicular to the skin, that helps. Uh, and, and just really uh, noticing where that needle is hitting. Yeah. So, so to try and keep your 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 needle straight up, like vertical. Not 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 necessarily straight up, but just when uh with the skin when it hits the skin, you you don't want it to um. So say I'm I'm tattooing, you don't want it to hit at an angle like this. Like if I'm do if you're doing a line, you hit it this way. So you don't want to shade like you're doing a line. You want that needle to hit. Right, exactly uh, right particular to the skin yeah. yeah whether it's at an angle or 90 degrees yeah so instead of yeah see i uh, see the guy that taught me he say if i say say if i needed to shade this he would tell me to this is really hard to do but he he would tell me <laughs> to to sort of twist my needle like this and do this mm -hmm. instead of doing mm -hmm. that do you know what i mean yeah uh but that's probably I, I not a lot of people not, doing that that's not the best yeah, way to I, do it i try not to unless I'm building on one side more than the other. So if it's like the side of a cheek here and I want this side to be darker, you can do that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, once you start doing that, that side that's twisted downward is going to uh, be hit darker. The skin more than the one in the, in the back. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. You won't get consistent uh, cross hatching with that. How, how, how did you learn that? How did you learn? Was it just like by looking at other people tattooing or was it? Um, yeah, it was, is both just, uh, kind of making my own mistakes. I'm, I'm self-taught, so Are you? I made a lot of my own mistakes. Yeah. I, I was um, going to ask that earlier on. I forgot to ask that. I, have you ever had an apprenticeship, but yeah, you're, you're self-taught. No, no, I wish, I wish I had, I think I, my career would have moved along a lot faster, but yeah. Um, yeah, no self-taught and yeah, just, I, I watch other people tattooing. Um, some of it, I kind of just figured out along the way. Yeah. Um, some of it I'm just I'm still figuring out like I feel like as artists we always learn 
Uh, yeah, I'm constantly learning, man. Like I, I'm constantly looking at different live streams. When you go live, I'm like studying mm. it. I'm screen recording it and then watching it back. Like it's yeah, it's crazy. Mm. Um, let's have a quick look down. Uh, da -da 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 -da. What do you find is the hardest thing about running a business? Organization for me, I think. I mean, yeah, yeah very organized. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm I'm so concentrated on tattooing. I don't really have to do much of the business side of it. I mean, it's for me, it's all just Instagram and going to work. Um, I mean, it, it's pretty straightforward. I, I don't have much. Uh, I'm not very business savvy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. How um how do people if they want to get a tattoo from you? How do they book you? Do do they just message uh, you, you just on go Instagram? Through the website. Website. Uh, it, yeah, the website is devotiontattoostudio.com. Awesome. And uh, they just go through there, and if they have a piece I want to do, um, we'll respond and, and get them in. Yeah, wicked. Awesome, man. Well, yeah. I very much appreciate you coming on. I've definitely learned some things today that I wanted to ask you. Um, I mean, <clears throat> if you're up for doing this again, I know you're a busy guy. Let me know, um, yeah. and we can definitely do do this again if you want to do this again. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm sure yeah, a lot... Sure a lot a lot of people will be uh appreciating this 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 when this goes out um it's definitely answered a lot of yeah maybe we can um uh, maybe we can even do one while i'm tattooing i can explain a few things yeah. uh, during that time that'd be sick yeah for sure i'll have yeah. to fly out man I know, I, i've i've got so many people to see as well like i need to i need to come and um actually meet you know you and 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 the guys over at bishop and stuff like that like i, just, I, I need to yeah. i need to get out there i think a lot of people will uh definitely appreciate that for sure 100 percent doing that live would be great yeah. we'll have to definitely do All it right. man i appreciate you coming on david yeah. thank you very much oh no problem thank you thank you